So this is dimension of a vector space. We're going to start off with a theorem. So in a two bases of a vector space, they must have the same number of vectors in it. And that's called the dimension, or just dim for short. Here's the proof of that. So we're going to let B from V1 to Vn be a basis for V. So we know it's linearly independent and spans V. So if another basis has more than n elements, well, then the set is not independent, which would be a contradiction. And so therefore, it doesn't have more than n elements. So if another basis has less than n elements, there's not enough of them. So therefore, it won't span v, which is another contradiction. So therefore, any two bases of a vector space do have the same amount of vectors. Okay, so the dimension of a finite dimensional vector space is the number of vectors that are in its bases. So let's do a bunch of examples. So we know the dimension of Rn is just n. The dimension of Pn, remember it's n, it's the nth degree polynomial plus the constant, so it's n plus 1. So the dimension of a matrix that's an m by n, that's actually m times n, and let's look at an example. So for this matrix, this 2 by 3 matrix, this is what we'll need for a basis. So we'll need to represent this A, the B. So these are the six that you see need to be represented for each of the letters and each of the positions. So we can see there's six in this basis, so that's our DIN. So the second degree polynomial has a dimension of three. So if we have an H as a subset of M three by three, What's our basis going to look like? So it looks like our dim of H is going to be 3. It's 3 of them. So here is a vector. H is a subspace of R3, where V is a vector in R3, where if we dot that vector with 2, 1, 3, we get 0. So what does V look like? So if we choose v to be any vector in R3, we can choose x, y, z to represent all of them, any vector. And there it is, we have a plane. So we can choose, if we want to write this out and figure out what our basis is, I think I would like to solve for y. It's the easiest one to solve for. And we'll use two parameters, since y is in terms of two variables. So we'll solve this using parametrics. So the two free variables. So we set x equals s. So we have two vectors here. And so our dimension of this h is 2. So this is a subset of M22. We can factor out that X, and that's just one vector. So this is one. Again, the one matrix spans the entire space because all these are the same variable. So here's our polynomial subset of P2 and it's got to fit this form. So P, we can combine these two. So we have two vectors. So the dim of this W is two. All 
Okay, this is just a little note that I need for my next theorem that I'm gonna prove. So if H is a subset of V and dim of V is N, then dim of H is less than equal to the dim of V, which is less than equal to N. So if you're a subspace, then the dimension has to be equal to or smaller. So if V is a vector space and the dimension of V is N, then any set of linear independent vectors forms a basis for V. So this is kind of a spin-off if you have N elements in our basis for Rn and they're linearly independent, then they form A bases. But now it doesn't have to be Rn, it could be any vector space. That's the difference. So here's our proof. Okay, so case one, it spans V. Since it's already linearly independent, then it's a basis. Case two, which was pretty much I could have just started at case two and called it a proof by contradiction. But the, this assumption is it doesn't span. So if it doesn't span V, then that means there exists a vector W in V that does not span. Let me write that. So if that's the case, then we also have the linearly independent theorem that you add W to the set and it spans. So we can actually just say is the span. So we can see the dimension of H is N plus one, but the dim of V is N and that's a contradiction because it has to be smaller so therefore, it's a contradiction to it doesn't span. Done. So as I mentioned, this is very similar to our N elements in Rn. And if they're independent, then it's a basis. It's very similar, but now we've extended it to any vector. And this is nice because checking independence is easier than checking spanning. And so this... Theorem helps to cut out checking for span for all vector spaces, not just our n. So I'll write that out. That's all for now. Thanks.